Charging the man accused of randomly shoving a woman to her death at a Times Square subway station with second degree murder. Many New Yorkers are afraid of returning to the subway as crime surges in the city. And now, newly elected Mayor Eric Adams is facing criticism for not doing enough to address violent crime after running as the law and order candidate. Let's bring in New York City Councilman Joe Borelli. And the mayor was really criticized after that horrific shoving death of Michelle Goh when he said that the subways are, are safe. People just have the perception that they're not safe. And then the other day, he dramatically walked that back saying this. Listen here. On day one, I took the subway system. I felt unsafe. I saw homeless everywhere. People were yelling on the trains. There was a feeling of disorder. He says, there's a feeling of disorder. I didn't feel safe on the subway. And I'm thinking, you're the mayor. Do something about it. Look, John, he's right to backtrack from his initial statement, uh, and everything he said is factually accurate. The, the subways are both in, in fact and in, re, in perception uh, less safe than they were just a few years ago. Uh, we've always had subway crime. You know, we have to be clear about that. The difference is we tolerate it now. The subways are not to be homeless shelters. They're not mental institutions. They're not drug rehab centers. But yet progressive dogma indicates that, that it's some kind of moral failure if we ask those people who fit in these categories uh, to, to, to not ride the subway or to remove them or to not let them sleep there. Uh, unfortunately, Mayor Adams has to drown out a lot of criticism from his own party, not from my party, but criticism from his own party, the Democrats, and he has to put his head down, uh, put more cops on the subway station, and call out the people in his own party, like D.A. Alvin Bragg uh, and the state legislature who passes things like bail reform, mm -hmm. uh, this way that, that our cops and his cops could work together in, in putting some of these people behind bars. You know, I lived in uh, New York City for a number of years. I, I took the subway all over, and, I mean, that's one of the miracles of New York is you can literally get anywhere in, in the city on the subway, and for the most part, I felt absolutely safe. This was a number of years ago. But when you talk about tolerating crime in the city, uh, and, and I know you don't mean it this way, but I'm just wondering if people start to tolerate crime in the city. When, when you have a 40-year-old woman at 9.20 in the morning on a Sunday shoved to her death, uh, in front of an R train at Times Square by a homeless man. How could you ever even begin to tolerate that? No, and it's unfortunate, but this is sort of the, the long-term effect uh, of, of the Democratic Party's uh, one-party control of a city. You know, the liberals and progressives, all they do is talk about the people who are on the subway, who are the homeless, who are the mentally ill, uh, always talking mm -hmm. about how the treatment options are not there, uh, how, how we need to keep uh, cops uh, from, from putting their hands on anyone who might threaten people. But in reality, they've forgotten about the commuters. They've forgotten about the millions of New Yorkers and visitors yeah. who rely on, on things like the New York subway. Every day, the party has to start prioritizing those people uh, over the perpetrators. You know, there's a common thread here, and that is homeless people who perpetrate these crimes. Many of them mentally ill. There was the, the shoving death of Michelle Go at the hands of a homeless person who's mentally ill. There's the uh, beating uh, death of Sandra Shells, a 70-year-old in Los Angeles, who was beaten to death by a uh, homeless woman. And then, of course, we have the horrible murder of Brianna Kupfer by a homeless person who was out on $50,000 bond, wanted for a crime in Charleston. And you wonder, how was he ever walking the streets of Los Angeles? Look, John, you make a great point. I mean, we, we sort of know who the people are causing a lot of these crimes are on the subway. You, you don't have to be a, a social worker to figure out who's a threat and who's not. But, 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 uh, the, what, do you, you know, but what do you mom. do about it? Because we've just seen an explosion of homelessness in America. Yeah, we, we have to, have, first of all, diagnose the issue with police officers, because these might be unsafe situations at, at the first outset, not with social workers. Uh, but we also need to change our confinement laws. Some people are a threat to themselves. Some people, as we saw with this recent pushing, are a threat to other people. Yeah. We simply can't allow and tolerate and allow this, this to go on in perpetuity. Wow. You know, a lot of people have been looking over their shoulders on the subway. Uh, I did on occasion, certain times of the day. But... Now you got to really watch where you are and stay away from that track before you get on a train.